go on to that verse. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Let's pray to God and let's pray. And thank you, Lord, sa inyong goodness. Amen. Salamat sa inyong biyaya. Salamat, Lord, for uh, what you have made us in Christ. And thank you, Lord, that we are complete in him. And Lord, as we go on sa blessed text na ito, Lord, at napaka deep napaka napaka great ang ang laman ng ang little verse na ito Panginoon but tulungan niyo kami Lord just somehow Lord to plunge a little bit of the depth Panginoon of what we have in Christ and now we pray na sana po Panginoon na maging malinaw po sa aming uh, sa bawat isa po sa amin ang mga positional truths ang mga katotohanan na you want us to enjoy, Panginoon. And, and Lord, clearly, it is our ignorance about what we have in you. At yun po ang nag sa amin na hindi appreciative, hindi thankful, hindi, Lord, ay hindi po uh, happy about, uh, about these things dahil hindi po namin nakita, dahil hindi po namin, Lord, na... na na praise Panginoon kung ano po ang meron kami sa inyo. But ngayong umaga, aming panalangin na sana po ay matuloy naming ma-appreciate ang aming Panginoong Jesus at ang kanyang ginawa sa aming buhay. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So now we come to, to this verse as we discuss verse number 9 about the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we talk about that and last Sunday and this this uh this morning we will talk about the part two of complete in Christ and as we discuss verse number 10 okay now um uh, as as I told um uh, as I mentioned this in my prayer kanina that this verse is truly loaded uh with much truth with much theology this little verse over here and this is loaded with much doctrine. And at least we are going to endeavor po mga kapatid uh, to uh, have a overview, at least a careful overview sa lahat kung anong meron sa verse na ito po mga kapatid. Now in continuing our study dito po sa Colossians, especially sa chapter number 2, and we have been made aware as we studied verse number 8 po mga kapatid, uh, we go on to this verse. We have made aware of also of chapter number one, early verses and chapter number two, as we go on verse by verse, that the Apostle Paul is making repeatedly po mga kapatid a, a, a statement, such a tremendous statement regarding the person, okay, of the Lord Jesus Christ and not only his person, but also his capacity, his ability to save. Okay? And that is continued also in this section as we go on to verse number 10. Now, although this, this part over here, starting ng verse 9 and 10, po mga kapatid, starting ng verse 9 all the way down, we can see this section in these verses as a rebattle ni Paul against this false philosophy it was the rebuttal of Paul against these heresies, against human tradition, against uh, these uh, elemental things or these rudimentary things, okay, which are um, which are spoiling the Colossians, po mga kapatid. And as a rebuttal ni Apostle Paul, po mga kapatid, it comes out a very positive thing na sinabi ng ating Apostle Paul and we know Paul's approach always against false system. Paul's approach always against false teaching. False doctrine po mga kapatid is always a positive approach. When I say that po mga kapatid, you don't see the Apostle Paul is spending much time or wasting his time argue against this false system. Okay. Wala, hindi masyado. Paul is not much of debating, trying to answer left and right and all of this. But Paul is 
as you observe in the Pauline epistle, he will just present the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time there is false teachings and false ano po, mga kapatid, system, Paul will simply present the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's precisely what he's doing okay, as he argue against human philosophy. He is not trying to debunk their system, but he's just presenting Christ as a counter truth, or I mean as a counter teaching para pudon by presenting the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what you see sa verses na as uh, a verse na ating pag aralan this morning. And as you remember last time, we're looking at the verses of verse eight and verse nine, and especially sa verse number eight. Uh, Paul is arguing against the the four facets, okay, of false heresy uh, that was attacking the Colossians. We have the philosophy, we have the vain deceit, we have the tradition of men, and we have the rudiments of the world. But this is just a philosophy, po mga kapatid, that is part as a human philosophy. And so the Apostle Paul is now digging into that, po mga kapatid, and in the midst of that. Magikita po natin that he gets into the concept of who Christ is and what Christ can do. Okay, we started that with verse number nine. He is Paul is now starting to dig to dig of who Christ is and what Christ can do. And the idea dito na magikita po natin is that po mga kapatid, that you don't need any human philosophy. Okay, you don't need any. Uh, teachings that are not after Christ. You don't need human wisdom, amen, or earthly wisdom. The idea in this verse number 10 he's trying to imply is that why you don't need all of those things is because you are already complete in him. Okay, all that I needed, all that we needed is already in him. The wisdom that we needed, the knowledge that we needed, is already in Christ in verse number three, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And now the Apostle Paul, I plinancha po ito in verse number 10 by saying that ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And that's the great truth po mga kapatid that he is declaring in verse number 10. Okay, in verse number 10. Now, in order to introduce my thoughts po mga kapatid uh, um, this, this morning, I want to draw okay, something dito po sa atin pong to draw your attention on something, uh, another passage other than this passage. And I would like to bring you to some instance in the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ when he performs some miracles, when he performs some healing, okay, of our, uh, uh, when he performs some healing during his earthly ministry. Okay, now, I, I'll do that to illustrate, mga kapatid, to illustrate a great principle to explain po mga kapatid, to explain, okay, something which relates to our completeness in Christ. And I want you to look at for a consistent pattern or a consistent principle, and we will go back to this chapter number two, verse number 10 later on, okay, in connection with what I'm trying to, to illustrate. So I'll use these verses just to prove a point or to illustrate our completeness in Christ. Now, I'd like to bring you this some little instances dito po sa story in Matthew chapter number 9, verse 22. You don't have to go to the verses, but uh, if, you will, if you would, but in Matthew chapter number 9, this is a story about a woman with an issue of blood, if you remember a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years, okay? There was no physician. There was no uh, ano po, medicine that could cure her. Remember that? A woman with an issue of blood. Now, 
she come to the Lord Jesus Christ in in a in a in a crowd and just because of the press he could not go in front of the Lord Jesus Christ but in all her might in all the strength that left in her amen she pursued on reaching the Lord until remember that until she touched the hem of of his garment you're familiar with the story then then Jesus Christ asked who touched me remember that verse then of course it was that woman now if you run through verse number 22 if you run to Matthew chapter number 9 verse number 22 this was the Lord Jesus Christ saying to this woman and he said daughter be of good cheer or be of good comfort in 9:22 ano sabi po niya but Jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort thy faith had made thee whole from that uh, thy faith had made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that hour i'd like you to underline and and please take note on the word made whole and the woman was made whole it was the encounter of the lord jesus christ that the woman was made whole now another instance in matthew chapter number 12 this was a man with a withered hand. Yung isa patay yung kanyang kamay. Okay, hindi po ano po mga kapatid. Then Jesus Christ came. The same story po mga kapatid. And then the Lord Jesus Christ said, Then saith he to the man. Sabi niya, stretch forth in verse number 13, Matthew 12, 13. Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it. He stretched it forth. And it was what? Restored whole. The hand was restored whole like as the other. So that was a man with a withered hand. It was his hand was restored whole. And you take note on that. He was made whole. In Matthew chapter number 15, if you remember that Syrophoenician woman, that Canaanite woman who come to the Lord Jesus Christ for the healing of her daughter. Remember yung... Una, unang instance in Matthew 15, we are familiar with that as we discuss yung dealing ng Panginoon sa Gentiles. Hindi siya pinansin, tapos later on, tinawag siyang dog. Remember that? Okay, now in verse number 28, and Jesus Christ turned about and told the woman, O woman, great is thy faith, and be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole. Do you remember? Their, her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now, if you read verse number 15 or verse number 31 of chapter number 15 of that verse, po mga kapatid, the Bible says in verse 31, in so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, and the maimed to be made whole, amen, and the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorify the God of Israel. So you see that her daughter was made whole, and many has, was made whole. And you remember the, the ten lepers in, in Luke chapter number 17? Remember that ten lepers who came to the Lord Jesus Christ for healing, and he healed all the the ten, but only he, uh, by the way, he told the ten lepers to go to the priests. And only one returned to the Lord Jesus Christ, which we are familiar. And Jesus Christ asked, where are the nine? Remember that? Where are the nine? But G, uh, only one returned and thank and worship him. And Jesus Christ said to that one leper, arise in verse number 19, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. Thy faith had made thee whole. So the difference between that one leper with the other leper is this. The other lepers were just healed. Example, di ba, ang ketong, ang leper ay kakainin yung, yung tenga, ang yung ilong at ganon. Nag-stop lang yung leprosy. So ibig sabihin, 
Kulang-kulang pa rin ang ilong niya, Brother Joff, at ang kanyang tenga at ano bang na, nawawala nilang ano po mga kabatid. Pero ang nai-restore into yung maibalik yung kanyang tenga at all of this into wellness or into entire in, it's in entirety po mga kabatid, only one. He was made whole. The, the rest were healed. The rest were cleansed. The lepers were cleansed. But only one was made whole. Amen. It's one thing na may damage na yon, no? May damage na yun para sa mga bata, no? Hindi ko alam kung na-discuss to ni Brother Randy sa mga stories niya, pero para sa mga bata na nakikinig, pag may leprosy, pagkakainin na yung mga cartilage part na isa, isa siyang bakterya na kakainin ang lahat ng ito. So, kung gagaling ka, kung mawawala na, mamamatay na yung bakterya, parang putol na ang iyong tenga, putol na ang iyong ilong, tang putol na ang other parts maybe yung mga kamay na pwedeng kainin although gumaling ka na pero the difference between that one leper is nung bumalik siya sa Panginoong Hesus binalik sa kanya yung nawawalang mga skins nawawalang mga mga cartilage na nakumpleto siya ulit okay so i hope maget po natin sa mga bata now In John chapter number 5, in John chapter number 5, in verse number 6. Okay, in John 5, verse number 6, magkikita po natin, this is a lame man, another instance, a lame man. So then, then, Jesus Christ asked that lame man, lame, ha? lame, a man that cannot walk. He was, he was in that pool of siluam waiting in the side that every year my angel na bumababa at nadaanan siya ng Panginoong Hesus doon no? kung sinong makapunta una sa 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 pool na yon of Siloam ay gagaling to whatever kind of sickness that was the story in John chapter number 5 kita po natin that was the story in John 5 gagaling siya sa kanyang sickness pero my layman then for more than 30 years he was there at waiting for that angel to come every year once a year lang kung sino makauna at siya yung gagaling pero siya, hindi, wala namang magkakaris sa kanya. Pwede pa si blind makatakbo. Pwede pa yung mga, mga deaf makatakbo. Pwede pa ang other thing. Pero siya, every time yung angel, nahuhuli siya palagi. Kaya for 30 years, walang nagdala sa kanya. Then Jesus Christ passed by and asked that layman, Will thou be made whole? Then ang sagot niya, Paano naman ako makapunta, Lord? Wala namang nagbubuhat sa akin. Then later on, na inayos po siya, pinagaling siya ng Panginoong Hesus. Then sabi ng Panginoon sa kanya in verse 14, Behold, thou art made whole. Kaya nga sabi niya, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Amen. Behold, thou art made whole. And the man departed and told the Jews in verse 15 that it was Jesus which had made him whole. It was Jesus which was made him whole. Now, not only in the earthly ministry of Christ, but also in the book of Acts, in the early Acts, when they were performing the apostles, performing signs, wonders, and miracles, that was also, ano po mga kapatid, ang nangyayari. Remember in Acts chapter number 4, in verses 9 and verse 10, there was that impotent man. Okay, who was healed? There was that impotent man. This was the same man na humihingi ng tulong kina kina Peter at sabi ni Peter, silver and gold have I none. But mayro kami ng something na pwede namin ibigay. This was the story. But in verse number nine, if you if you are following in Acts chapter number nine, in Acts chapter four verse nine, the impotent man. It was asked by by what means he is made whole. There was a question by what means he is made whole because gumaling yung impotent man. Now in verse number ten, the answer is even by him that this man stand here before you whole. So who is that? It was by the Lord Jesus Christ that this man standing before you whole. So gumaling yung impotent man at he is now complete. He is now made whole. Now in Acts chapter number 9, another instance, this was Aeneas. 
also a man, a lame man. It was Peter who told him in Acts 9 verse 34, and sabi niya, Jesus Christ make thee whole. Arise and make up, I make thy bed. Sabi niya kay Anas, Jesus Christ make thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. So my point, mga kabote, these are just jumping to prepare. The point that I'm going to make is now we see all of these passages and one thing is consistent. When Jesus come or in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. One thing is consistent, amen. When Jesus Christ healed somebody, when Jesus Christ performed a miracle to somebody, he made them what? He made them whole. Amen. He made them whole. When we talk about whole, we were talking about Christ made them entirely. Entirely. There is no one thing. There is no lack or fully. The word complete and full, they're the same. And whole. So they are they are made entirely well. That was the common thing. That was the most consistent thing that we see. And there is no missing parts. Okay, there was no missing parts. Now, listen, all the healing miracles of Jesus Christ made these people completely entire or completely healthy. Amen. There, there was no progression involved. There was no wait for two weeks and you will be healed completely. Wait for a month and you will be healed completely. In that very instance, instantly, they, he could say, rise up. Amen. And walk. Amen. And right in an instant, they were made whole po mga kabotet. They were made whole instantly. There was an instantaneous effect when Jesus Christ uh, Healed them, there was no progression, record of progression, that they are not completely healed. Now, you say, now you tell me, now you ask me, po mga kabotet, what in the world this has to do with Colossians chapter number 2? And you know my point is obvious. Amen. You know my point is obvious. I pick up these verses because, mga kapatid, it served as a beautiful picture. It gave us a beautiful picture of the way Jesus Christ have saved us spiritually. Jesus Christ, this is a, it this shows a beautiful picture of what happened to us when we are in Christ. When Jesus Christ came, when we trust him. It gives us truly as a perfect picture, mga kapatid, of what happened to our soul, of what happened to us spiritually. And if Christ heals physical illness, and if Christ makes those people entirely whole, then that is precisely what the apostle meant also in Colossians chapter number 2, verse number 10, when he says, and that ye are complete in him. Amen. You are complete in him. And you could put that word whole there. Amen. You are made whole. You are entirely made whole as per to our soul. And just as Jesus Christ did those miracles of healing that made the people entirely well, so when Christ also touches your life spiritually, when he touched your, when he came to you, amen, in salvation, when he gives you that salvation, it is an entire salvation. It is a complete salvation. It is a whole salvation. It is a full salvation. Amen. And what was the impact? What was the effect? Then the believer becomes spiritually made whole. The believer is made entirely well. We are made perfect. We experience that fullness and we are entirely well. We are entirely well. 
Now, I'd like you to look at also another instance in John chapter number one. And this is, again, a perfect illustration of what happened to us. This was John the Baptist was speaking in John chapter number one. In verse number, look at in verse number, I'd like you to look at verse number 15. John 1 verse 15, the Bible says, John bear witness of him, and talking of John the Baptist, and cried saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now look at verse 16. And of his fullness, and I'd like you to underline that word, and of his fullness, take note, have all we received. Hindi nila tinanggap yung fullness, ha? but have all we received. Ibig sabihin, natanggap nila yung fullness. Do you get that? Hindi nila tinanggap, but natanggap nila. So, nakita mo, and of his fullness, have all we received in grace for grace. You see, speaking of abounding grace, that is grace for grace. That is to say, grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. And Paul put that rightly well when he said, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That is grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. And that is what it, we call it the unlimited grace of God. The infinite grace of God that flows to your soul the moment you got saved. Yeah. You receive the fullness, the exceeding greatness, the exceeding riches of His grace. That abundant grace that Pastor Ben talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. Amen. They all received in verse number 16. Now, when you are saved, when you got saved, you received of Christ what? What do you receive of Christ? You receive his fullness. Why? Because who was Christ? Who is Christ? In verse 9 of chapter number 2. Amen. Of Colossians chapter number 2 in verse number 9. Which we discuss po mga kabatid clearly. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Colossians 1.19 as we discuss. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And in Colossians 1.27 the Bible says po mga kabatid. That mystery which is Christ in you the hope of glory. So the, the, the fullness of God is in Christ and that Christ is in you. And when you got saved, you received of Christ His fullness. You receive His fullness. You receive the fullness of Christ, the wholeness of who He is, of what, of who Christ is and what He possesses and all that He is and all that He has. The wholeness of Christ become our wholeness so that when you God saved po mga kabatid, you are spiritually whole. There is no lacking. Amen. There is no wanting. Lord, thank you. On the part sa atin. And that's what Paul is trying to explain in Colossians 2.10 here. And that's what, that's his whole point here. That he is trying to say to these people, he is trying, parabang, he's trying to see, look, tingnan nyo, tingnan nyo, mga Colossians, bakit pa kayo naaalur, naiintays sa mga, mga false philosophy na ito? Look at, let me remind you, para sinasabi niya, that when you trusted Christ, you were already made whole. There is nothing that you can add. There is nothing that it lacks. You are already complete. What wisdom are you talking about? What philosophy are you talking about? What knowledge are you talking about? They are all in Christ. What salvation that you are talking about? You are all in Him. And all is in Him. And by the way, a healthy man if you are entirely healthy, you don't need any more medicine. Kung ikaw pala ay magaling, kailangan mo pa ba ng gamot? 
Therefore, you, you don't need also human philosophy. You don't need this Jewish legalism. Amen. You don't need this strange pagan mysticism that they are trying to, to impart. And you don't need uh, abstaining from all of these things to maintain your salvation. Therefore, Paul is simply saying, you don't need anything. That when you trusted Christ and his salvation, you were made whole. You were made complete. And that is the point of verse number 10. And so, I say, mga kabated, if we can say the miracles of Jesus Christ made whole, amen, of those people during his earthly ministry, I can also say that the spiritual completion of salvation, amen, make us whole, amen, as whole is spiritually. And so that when you are saved, when you got saved, you have a clean heart, you have a new heart, you have a new spirit, you have, a, you have soundness, you have whole blessed, uh, wholeness, and you become spiritually well. And you don't need to add anything to that. And there is nothing to add because you are already complete. There is no need for legalism. There is no need for asceticism. There is no need for mysticism. There is no need for human philosophy. There is no need for these humanistic traditions and rudiments of the world which are not after Christ. Because all is in there. All is in there. Now, go, going back to Colossians chapter number 2. Going back to Colossians chapter number 2. Literally po mga kapatid, itong Colossians chapter number 2 verse number 10. Literally po mga kapatid, it says that you have been made full. Because of verse number 9. You have been made full. You have been made whole. You have been made complete. And I'll say this, there is nothing missing. Why? Because Christ fills you up. To the brim. Amen. He fills you up. Amen. And there are nothing or other things to add to that. Amen. And you have been made full with the fullness of him. Which fill it all in all. Only Christ can fill all in all. In Ephesians chapter number 1. If you look at po mga kapatid, in verse number 23, look at verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him, who is Christ, that filleth all in all. Who can fill you to the full satisfaction? Who can fill you to the fullest? Only Christ. Because he, is, he can fill you. All in all. That's the reason why he is in the highest heaven. Look at in Colossians, uh, Ephesians 4. That's the reason why he is in the highest heavens. Look at in verse 10. And sabi dito po mga kapatid, He that descended is the same also ascended up far above all heavens. What is the point? That he might fill all things. Amen. What is the thing? That Christ could not fill or filled. Amen. Kaya yun ang nangyayari po sa atin. You have been made full with the fullness of Him. With the fullness of Christ who fills all in all. And with that, mga kapatid, I'd like you to, to take that. And you may not feel it. You may not, you may not somehow, ano po, there, they, there's, I, I, let me say this, kasi sometimes itong mga spiritual reality na ito, it's hard to reckon. It's hard to make it true. 
Because we are looking for a sensation. We're looking for some sort of feeling, some sort of, of excitement and thrill. Wala ka mang nararamdaman. Wala ka mang ano po mga kapatid. Parang wala mang sensation or virtue come out from you. Because this is, these things are not subject to human experience. These are not subject to human experience. This is not about what you feel and how you feel. But this is reality. This is a spiritual reality. This is a spiritual truth that happened exactly to you. Whether you feel it or not, as long as you are saved, you are made full. As long as you are saved, you are complete in Christ. These are not subject to any experience or any sensations that we have. It is truth. And by and by, you reckon yourself so that it will become your experience and it become our walk. And we reckon ourselves to the truth, to what we have in Christ and to what God has made us in Christ. And that would become an application. That would, that would set the course of our mindset. That would set the course of the path of the walk that we should tread in. And that's how we live. That's how we we ano po mga kapatid, apply these truths. We don't devise, amen, some spiritual walk in the way we think it, the way we know what's right is, but all our walk is just a manifestation of the spiritual reality that happened to you and what we are made in Christ. It is now our standing that determines our walk. It is now our position in Christ that determines our state. Amen. As a Christian, as a condition, yes, as a Christian, and that's how it should be. Our appreciation to this would lead us, amen, to a consistent walk to what you are made in Christ. And with this, we're talking about when, when you see this expression in verse number 10, that you are complete. Ye are complete. Ye are complete. Again, my, my advertisement dati, may isang product na ang kanilang, ang kanila pong ang catchy phrase is, you are complete. And yun yung centrum na vitamins, multivitamins from A to zinc. Yan, yan. Gusto ko yan. Amen. Amen. And you are complete. No, ang completion is with the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. That's the real completion. Now, when you see this completion, okay, or ye are complete in the, you, you see this? Look at, observe, balikan nyo po. And ye are complete in him. So it is a present tense. It is an indicative mood. Na magikita po natin po mga kabatid. So my point is, Paul is expressing a present tense truth, a present tense factual reality that is true to all believers now. Amen. It is your present standing. It is your present position in Christ. That is to say that all believers are complete. Not were, but are complete in Christ. And that is the one, po mga kapatid, that is straight final reply which is needed to shut up those philosophers, to shut up those false teachers, po mga kapatid. That Paul is arguing that if he is the very fullness of the Godhead bodily, then nothing can be added to him. And if the believer is in him, then what can be added which the believer does not already possess in him? Amen. It's just perang tinuldukan ang argumento po mga kapatid by just telling who Christ is. By just presenting who Christ is. So the emphasis in this verse also po mga kapatid, because it is in the present, it is also upon the abiding results of our position in Christ. 
It is on that abiding results of our position in Christ. So that's the emphasis po mga kapatid na makikita po natin dito. Okay? That means that the believer, you and me, okay, is permanently holds that position because it's in the presence. Pag were po yun or will, future, mahirap. Pero are, it is a present, amen, standing. So the, the emphasis now that the believer should you and me appreciate, it is the result of our, it is the abiding result of our position in Christ. That means we hold permanently that position before God from the moment we got saved. From the moment we got saved, we still have it now. It is not something, a future reward. It is not a past transaction, po mga kapatid but it is a present standing and that is that's what you are that's who you are in the sight of god in the presence of god you are ye are complete in christ so the words complete as we go on po mga kapatid it it shares the same thought with the word fullness in verse number 9 So this is an obvious reference to Christ's fullness. That's why we can rightly say that we are complete in Him because Christ is in us and all fullness are in Him. Amen. That's why we are complete. That's the result of the com our completion or our completeness in Christ is the result of who Christ is. And believers, we have been filled out of Christ's fullness. Umaapaw. And all the fullness of the Godhead lives permanently in Christ. And Christ lives permanently in you. And this verse says that God has given the believers fullness in Him. Our fullness is not on anything else but it's in him and ye are complete in him amen our fullness of life comes from Christ's fullness so we need no outside help from any other source we need no supplementary wisdom we need no supplementary knowledge when it comes to salvation and wisdom, when it comes to Christian life, all that we needed is in Christ. And all that we needed is written in the Bible. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. And every Christian, at the moment of salvation, at the, the moment you've got saved, you receive His fullness. And this is God's estimation of us. This is God's view of us. We are viewed as pardoned, as righteous as Christ, as holy as Christ. Amen. We are with him in his life. Our sonship, our heirship, our glory, our merit, all that God sees, the Father sees, is Christ's merit. Christ's sonship, Christ's life, Christ's glory, Christ's heirship, Christ ano po mga kapatid? Christ uh, holiness, Christ faith, Christ sanctification, Christ amen, righteousness amen. and all of this. Amen. Glory to God. And God accomplishes this instantly. Instantaneously. Just like the way those men, mga kapatid, physically were healed instantly. You know, one good thing I preach in, I preached there, I think, in Davao, and they said that that was the shortest preaching that I preached. Because, of course, bago ako mag-preach po, mga kapatid, 30 minutes na lang. 
ang iniwan sa aking time bago ako mag-preach. So, for sure, that was the shortest, ano po mga kapatid, yeah. <laughs> sermon that I preached in Davao. Bago po ako nagkakasakit. The first Sunday we were there. I preach on what Christ, I what what great things God has done for us. And I mention all of those miraculous works of the Lord Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry, the, the raising the dead, the cleansing the lepers, and all of that. that. That was just an illustration, but my whole point is this. It happened to them, and later on, they died. Amen. But it happened to him, they were healed just one sickness. And later on, amen, they die. But to me, sabi ko, I said that to say this. I say all of that to say this. That I was blind, but now I see. Amen. I was dirty, filthy, just like that leper, but I am cleansed. I was just like that that woman who is, who, who is sick and there is no healing, and I am also made whole. Amen. I was just like that lame. Then Christ came and made me to walk again. I was just like that dumb. Amen. Amen. And now I can speak. He gave me Amen. a new Amen. voice. Amen. Amen. I was that, that deaf. Amen. That I could not hear. Now his words are Praise sweeter. And all of that, po mga kapatid, all of those things, all of that we mentioned, all of that we mentioned earlier happens to you spiritually. And Amen. this is not just a temporal healing, but you are entirely complete. And that is eternal. It accomplishes all those things, all the spiritual blessings, and all of that add to that. Amen. They, it happened instantly. Just like the song. Amen. Riches, supernal, and blessings, eternal. Amen. From His hand we receive the moment we believe, the moment we've got saved. At, listen, not only it happened instantly, the moment of salvation, and listen, it remains true until now. Amen. It remains true until now. Amen. In the very presence of God. Because the Bible says, not ye were complete, but ye are complete in Him. Amen. So, we do not possess Christ as, <laughs> praise the Lord, as an installment plan. Amen. We don't receive Christ as installment plan. We don't possess Him as an installment plan. I like we that. have him as a complete savior. Amen. Amen. We have him as a complete savior. And Amen. we have him and the, the com we have him as a complete savior and a complete results of our salvation at the moment we come to know him. He's a complete savior and that completion, that fullness, that making me whole happens instantly and up to now po mga kapatid. That complete salvation, that complete forgiveness, that complete redemption, that complete atonement, that complete knowledge, complete wisdom, complete sanctification, complete victory. Name them all. Amen. It happens to you at the moment of salvation and it continues until now. That is your present standing. That is your present position in Christ. We may appreciate Him more as we grow in Him. However, po mga kapatid, we do not receive more of Him. Amen. Amen, amen. Once you got saved, the fullness of Christ is already in you. So, the more you study, yes, you will appreciate Him more. But you did not receive more of Him. Because you already have all of Him. As you discover, as you unearth who He is and the person, it did not add something to your salvation. It did not add something to the indwelling Christ. Because you already have all of Him. Amen. 
But what grows, what added to us is just our appreciation. It's just our view of Christ. But the truth is, we already have all of Him. Amen. So, ang duty na lang natin po mga kapatid is to know Him more and to know all the things that He has done for us. All we need, ang kailangan na lang mag-grow sa atin is yung pag-ibig na lang natin sa Kanya. Yung appreciation na lang natin sa Kanya. Yun na lang kailangan mag-grow. Pero as far as the indwelling Christ is concerned, you already have all of Him in you. At wala na yun. Wala na idadagdag doon. Amen. And thank God for that. And you see this? The word in Him. You are complete. But you see that? In Him. Which means, mga kapatid, union with Christ. When you are in Him, because you are united in Him. And this is the believer's position. This speaks of the believer's position before God. Amen. We are in Him. As God views you, as God looks at us, He looks at us, mga kapatid, exactly like He would look at Christ. What is that? What is the view of God kay Kristo? Perfect. Entire. Complete. We are not perfect in our experience. But I'll tell you this. But in our position, in our standing with God or before God, we are perfect forever. Experientially, Marami pa akong faults. Experientially, marami ako mga bad decisions, wrong decision. Experientially, while in this life, I may displease God. I may have a lot of things to improve. But positionally and spiritually, in my standing before God, I am complete forever. I am perfect forever. And that's the truth. So it is now my duty, amen, that my mindset, my manner of life should become consistent to what I am in Christ, to who I am made in Christ. So that is now our endeavor. That's why we are here. That's why God gave us the Bible. What's the point? That's why we need to listen to preaching. That's why we need to study the word of God. Why so? Po, mga kapatid, so that my condition and my state will be consistent with my position oh, of who I am made in Christ. That's why when we read the Bible, when we study the Bible, when we hear the, the, the teachings of the Bible, anong sabi doon? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the men of God may be perfect. Truly furnished unto all good work. So th there is a perfection that I have to attain to be consistent of who I am in Christ. And that's why he gave us pastors. He gave us preachers. He gave us evangelists and ministers of God. What is the point? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge. And of the son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature. Of the fullness of Christ. That is our endeavor now. That my state. My condition as a Christian. As my experience is concerned. Not my position. But my experience is concerned. To be consistent by and by. Amen. With that perfection that he already made in me. And in you. Po, mga kapatid. That's why he gave us ministers of God. That's why Paul said, whom we preach. Warning every man. Amen. In all wisdom that we may present every man perfect. Teaching all men in all wisdom. That we may present every man what? Perfect. Perfect in Christ Jesus. So we understand that. At sana hindi tayo ma-confuse between our standing and our state. Po mga kapatid. So we may not be perfect in, my, in our experience at this moment. But we follow after. 
we press on just like the apostle Paul. And I want to apprehend more. And we press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God. We want to know more. There is that pursuit, po mga kapatid. We are not perfect in our experience, but in our position, in our standing before God, amen, we are perfect forever. We sh because we share His fullness. We share His perfection. We share, amen, His a wholeness. And from God's viewpoint, as, as the viewpoint of God is concerned, nothing is wanting in us because of Christ. Because we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And Jesus Christ fully meets every demand of God for us. That's why God requires no more. Because God is forever satisfied with Christ. And when Christ is in you, God is already forever satisfied with you. That's why there is no sin that could forfeit that. There is no sin that could remove. There is no, no, no imperfection that could remove you from that blessed position. Because God is forever satisfied in Christ. And Christ is in me. Therefore, God is forever satisfied with me by the grace of God. Amen. That's something that the believer's joy would provide believer's joy. Amen. And this, <laughs> this Paul is talking here in, ano po mga kapatid, in, in, in Colossians chapter number 2. That he truly, Paul, deals a blow. Parang nagbigay siya ng isang bagsakan to this human heresy of human philosophy and this human religion. He gives a blow to this, to this false system that tries to deny that Christ has the power to give complete salvation. Because these people, this Gnosticism that, that is spread, na, trying to say Christ is not enough. Ito yung gusto nilang imply. On top of Christ, you needed this. You needed that. That is what they're trying to, 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 ano po mga kapatid, to, to present to the Colossians po mga kapatid. They try to deny that Christ could provide completion of salvation, completion in, in their in their position. And the Colossians, mga kapatid, who have in Christ the fountain that never fails, that, 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 that fountain that never ran out of supply, would they, they are a fool. Amen. If they will still listen to these false teachers, who is who has no who are empty there's no real substance they are just like a broken cisterns they hold no water and when christ is all the supply that infinite supply of god as a everlasting fountain of blessing amen when they will exchange him for such false teachings they're a fool that's a foolish thing. And the same true with Christians. That's what God, Paul, I, that's what Paul told to the, to, the Colos, uh, to the Galatians. Amen. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who had bewitched you, sabi niya, that you will not obey the truth. Amen. And they added something to Christ. And it's a foolish thing. Believers, Christians, it is, it is really a foolish decision when you are not satisfied of who Christ is. Not only in salvation, but also in your Christian life. Also in your Christian walk. That God already placed all that you needed in Him. And here we are, we are already in him. 
is trying to play with the world, enjoying with the world, lurking with sin, and lurking with some ideology and some philosophy which are not after Christ. And as if Christ is not enough. As if his word is not enough. And that's a foolish thing. Mga kapatid, may, it, the, may this lesson be remind us of who Christ is and what we have in him. Now, if, if we have all we need before God in Christ, amen. If we have all that we need before God in Christ, why should we turn to this base, low class system or low class ano po, teachings or ideology or philosophy? Amen. Why, why should believers today run after every wind to every wind of doctrine? Bakit maalur pa rin? Amen. It's because po mga kapatid, our ignorance about who Christ is and what we have in Him. Amen. That that makes the believer sway to his real calling, to that real, real ano po mga kapatid, expectation ng Panginoon sa kanyang buhay. And this is true of every believer. No matter what your experience of living may be like. This is true that Jesus Christ is our substitute not only at the point of salvation but also as an ongoing status before God. He's not just a substitute when He saved you the moment you got saved. But up to now, what God sees is He sees Christ. We stand judicially righteous. We stand perfectly righteous and perfectly holy before God forever. And that is God's estimation of us. And is equivalent to his estimate of Christ. Ito yun, ito yun. It is equivalent of his, his estimation of Christ. And God identifies us with Christ in everything. In everything. Just think about that. Pastor Ben talk about those heavenly things. As to introduction to what we have in Christ today. God identifies us with him in everything. You know, mga kapatid, that is a blessed position that we have. That's why, whew, hindi mawawala yung kaligtasan natin. Hindi, hindi mababawasan ang kaligtasan natin. Hindi nadadagdagan ang kaligtasan natin. Ang posisyon natin kay Kristo. Yun ang kadakilaan po mga kapatid ng ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay po natin. And ang resolve po natin sa buhay na ito, para bang in the presence of God, in the presence of the Father, not the slightest of you your merit, not the slightest of your goodness, not the slightest of, of what you can contribute is acknowledged and seen. We are identified with Christ in everything, in the presence of God. Kaya, how could I boast? How could I brag before God that I could not be saved, Lord, if I have not been Doing this, I could not have this complete joy if I'm not doing this and that. Amen. There's nothing. Kompleto na. Kaya napaka-gahaman, napaka-daring ng isang religion that trying to to ano po mga help Christ. Amen. 
trying to help God sa mga kakulangan sa kanyang ginawa. Kaya napaka yabang talaga ng isang tao na kailangan pa niyang dadagdagan si Kristo. And to God that is really, really ano po mga kapatid, a blatant rejection and blatant denial of what God has freely offered to you and me. Kaya napakalaking kasalanan, dito mo ma-realize bakit napakalaking kasalanan ang unbelief, ang rejection. Because you have already rejected kung kung ikaw ay hindi mananampalataya you have refused to receive everything that God has offered when you rejected Christ when you refused Christ be is because uh, ano po mga kapatid you have already by virtue rejected all that God is trying to give you and provide for you because Christ is his all And when you, amen, on the other end, amen, trust Him, amen, and be saved, you have also all of God's provision. All of what God wants you to have. And it's all fullness. We have also everything, amen, in this life if we have Christ. Ang kabaliktaran, we lose everything. Yun po mga kapatid. Now, with this, there's another part in Colossians 2.10. And ye are complete in Him. And who is Christ? Which is the head of all principality and power. So, this is the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ over all principality and power. Now, spiritually speaking, spiritually speaking, we are earthlings. Taga earth po tayo. Okay? And we have this earthen vessels. And we are complete in the one who is the head of all principality and power. So the idea conveyed in these two verses, starting on verse 9 and verse 10 po mga kapatid, okay, is that Christ is the completion of the fullness of deity in verse number 9 and also the completion or the fullness of the believer. Okay? Christ is the completion of the Godhead the fullness of the Godhead, and Christ is also the fullness of the believer in verse number 10. Amen. So the argument of this passage is that Christ is God. Amen. And therefore, He is supreme over all angels. He is supreme over all principalities and power. He is so supreme over angelic beings those invisible things and that in him the believer is complete why because there are still believers who are lurking around who are allured or enticed about worshiping of angels in verse 918 let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility And look at that. And worshiping of angels. Worshiping of angels. Intruding on those things which he had not seen. Vainly popped up in this fleshly mind. And this is the Apostle Paul gave a full display of who Christ. Not only as the head of of the body, the church, in Colossians 1.18. But Christ is also head over all things, over all angels, over all principalities and powers. And what make him 
to become the head over all principalities and power. By the way, these principalities and power would include the fallen angels, which rebel against Christ, which rebel against the headship of Christ. The design of God, ano nga yung design ng Panginoon? When He created all things by Him and what? For Him. It is by Him and for Him, including the invisible things, the visible and the invisible things. Whether they be thrones, whether they be dominions, whether they be principalities or powers, amen, or might, all things were made by Him and for Him. The design of God that God created all of those things that Christ might be in 1 Timothy chapter number 6, the only potentate that he might be the only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, both heaven and earth. But there was a rebellion happened before us, before the world of Adam. It was the rebellion led by Lucifer, as we know. And that was a revolt alongside with those who followed Lucifer. Amen. And they acknowledged Lucifer to be their head. Kaya nga, sabi do, the devil and his angels. Amen. So nakuha po yun. Kaya nga, from that time onward, listen, dalawa po ang, ang pagka-prince ng Jablo. He is now called as, right now, as the prince of the power of the air. So that he is the prince of the principalities and powers in heavenly places right after, right after that rebellion po, mga kapatid. Now when Adam, that was rebellion in heaven. When Adam revolted against God, that's why Pastor Ben talked about the two programs, heaven and earth, kanina. And when Adam also revolted against God, there was a rebellion not only in heaven, but this time on earth by Adam, by falling into Satan's trap, into Satan's sin. Adam also yielded the dominion of the earthly kingdom to the devil. And from that time onward, the devil is now called the prince of this world. When you talk about a prince, that is equivalent with a king. That's a man with authority. So he is the prince of the power of the air. And he is also the prince of this world. Two areas, two realms, po mga kapatid. But you know, when Jesus died, when Jesus died, when Jesus Christ resurrected, accomplished that salve uh, that that redemptive work. Kaya I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you this, and I, I told you this many times, that the cross is bigger than what you think. It does not just provide for your salvation, but the blood of his cross is bigger than that. But it is also for the provision of the reconciliation of all things. Pero wag nating wag nating misunderstand yung reconciliation of all things, ha? Hindi po yan ang pagkaligtas ng lahat, but rather ang pagkabalik, ang pagka-restore kung anong nawala sa Panginoon. Ano yung nawala? Yung headship, yung yung sinira ng Diablo. And that was including the restoration of all things. And this, mga kapatid, nung namatay si Kristo, ang uh, tayo na nakita natin that it has an impact, great impact to our salvation. But the effect of the cross is bigger than that. The impact of the cross is greater than that. It is also for the kingdom, for Israel. 
It is also for the restoration of the heavenly places, the order, the hierarchies in the heavenly places to be back in the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be restored to the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is also for the creation of the one new man, the body of Christ, and many, many things. That's what the cross, and to include that, that, that includes also the spoiling of all principality and power. Now, Colossians chapter number two, it tells us of our salvation. The effect of that is in verse 11, verse 12, verse 13, verse 14. But more than that, verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it. He made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it. And you know, po mga kapatid, why Jesus Christ now became the head over all principalities and power in heavenly places? It is because of that cross work of Christ that the restoration of the headship was already been, amen, given back to the one who arose from the dead. And Jesus Christ now, by virtue of that finished work, is now the head over all principality and power by spoiling them, by, by conquering them, by winning over, by triumphing over them. And by virtue of that triumph, he is now the head of all principalities and power. Okay? So that's the thing. Na-restore na. Ang earthly kingdom, kailan po marirestore? Maibalik sa headship ng Panginoong Jesus. Sa millennial kingdom. Pagbalik ng Panginoong Jesus. Makuha na niya ulit yung earth. At sa ngayon, presently po mga kabatid, ang Panginoong Jesus na ang head over all principalities and power. Bakit? By virtue of that finished work na patunayan niya, na panalo niya, ang karapatan na iyon, ang posisyon na iyon. Yes, siya yung may-ari sa kanila by virtue of creation. Kaya lang umalis sila. But by virtue of spoiling them also and put them under His feet by His resurrection. Look at Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1. In verse number 20, the Bible says, Which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Now look at that. Far above all principality, ang kanyang resurrection at ang kanyang ascension, pabalik sa heavenly places, what is the position? Far above all. The principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and had put all things under his feet. So by geographical position, Jesus Christ is far above all. Saan ang mga principalities and power? Nasa heavenly places. Where is the Lord Jesus Christ? Above all principalities and power. And he's the head. Because he's above all. And what is the context of that verse? And that is when he rose from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And Jesus Christ now is far above all. And put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Mamaya, babalikan ko po yan. Which is the head of the body, the fullness of him that filleth all 
in all. So he is now head over angels by virtue of that resurrection. Let's add another verse. Let's add another verse. In Hebrews chapter number one, look at Hebrews chapter number one. That is now the position of Christ. Hebrews chapter number one in verse number four. Now, what happened in verse three is he is at the right hand of the father. Look at verse three. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins. And what's the next thing? And sat down. That means he finished the purging and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So that is the position of Christ, which is far above all heaven, yung right hand of the Father. That is his position. At doon po sa ano po, kanina sa Ephesians 4.10, he is far above all heavens. Nandun po siya sa far above all heavens. So what is the impact of being at the right hand of the Father after he rose from the dead, after he completed the salvation for all men? Verse 4, being made so much better than the angels. He is now so much better than the angels. He had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. But look at verse 5. What was the argument of God? Who I for unto which of the angels. This was the argument. For unto which of the angels said he at any time. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him my father. And he shall be to me a son. Sino sa mga angels ang sinabihan niya, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now if you observe this, cross-reference this to Psalms, cross-reference to, to, to Acts chapter number 13, this begotten here was not, was not ano po, of God manifest in the flesh or was not in the incarnation. But this begotten in reference here was in reference to his resurrection and his ascension. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Sino sinabihan niya? It was the son. And that's why in verse 6, and again, when he bring it in the first begotten into the world, who was that? Begotten from the dead. And he said, let all angels of God worship him. You see that? Let all angels of God worship him. Because by virtue of what Christ had accomplished, he is now so much better than the angels. He is now the head of all principalities and power. And he put all things under his feet and let all angels worship him. Let those who follow the devil worship him. Let those principalities and power who follow the devil should recognize him as to who he is now. Because of what he has accomplished. Ito po yung beauty. Ito po yung weight po mga kapatid na maintindihan po sana natin. In verse 13. Look at verse 13. But to which of the angels saith he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemy thy footstool. When Christ was on that right hand of the Father, Paul said, far above all principalities, and power in heaven. That talks of the position of Christ. That talks about the position of who Christ is. Now, another context in 1 Peter chapter number 3. 1 Peter chapter number 3. Quick draw po mga up then. 1 Peter chapter number 3. I'd like you to look at verse number. Ang context is again is resurrection of Christ. In verse number 21, last part. By the resurrection of of Jesus Christ. You see the consistency of the scripture? Take note that. Huh? The context is verse 21 in by the resurrection of Christ. Now, who is Christ now? Where is Christ now? He resurrected and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And what is that place over there? There's a place of authority. There's a place of headship. There's a place of highest position. There's a place of supremacy that far above all heavens. That that, that far above all principality and power. That's a place of dominion. And look at verse 22. Who is gone into the heaven and is on the right hand of God. Right hand of God. Look at that now. 
angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Do you, do you see the reference? When Christ arose from the dead and when he sat down at the throne of the majesty on high, he become head over all principality and power over all those angels, including those who rebel. So positionally speaking, na-restore na yung sa heavenly places. But pagdating ng panahon, pagdating ng appointed time, kasi nakadoom na yon, judge na yon, talo na ang jablo, natalo na ang jablo, hindi na ang jablo dapat ang i-acknowledge na head, si Kristo na dapat. And that is the power ng kanyang resurrection at ang kanyang position at the right hand of the of the majesty on high po mga kapatid. Now, my point is this. Ano po ang ka, ano po ang relevance nito sa atin? And ye are complete in him. Ye tapos complete in him. Anong bakit sinabi which is the head of all principalities and power? Now, you and me, if you are saved, you are part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not only in him. We are not only in Christ. But we are also raised up with Him. We are also seated with Him in the heavenly places. So that is to say po mga kapatid, in Ephesians chapter number 2, take note, <laughs> what a blessing po mga kapatid, when you tie this together, in Ephesians, where is Christ? In that place of position, in that place of position, which is far above all heavens. And that's what make him above all angels, above all principalities and power. And when you got saved, not only he baptized you in Christ, put you in Christ, part of that completion in Christ is this. Verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together. We are quickened us together with Christ. You remember the impact of the resurrection of Christ over the angels? And now the Bible is telling us, you are quickened with him. And think of the impact of being quickened with Christ to the angels, to the principalities and power. Now, think of the impact also of Christ at the right hand of the Father, seated on the majesty, the throne of the majesty on high, to the angels, to the principalities and power. Now, look at verse 6. And had raised us up together and made us sit, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, if there's Amen. the impact of Christ, think about that, Amen. of his sitting at the right hand to the angels, to the principalities and power. And think about you are sitting with Christ. You are resurrected with Christ in that heavenly places. That's why we are told in Colossians chapter number one, verse 13, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You are already translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 20. Ano sabi doon? Ano sabi doon? For our conversation is in heavens from whence we look for our Savior. Amen. The Lord Jesus. Where is your conversation? Is in heaven. Now look at Colossians chapter number 3. Take note. Colossians 3. I'm in my closing thoughts po mga kapatid. Gusto ko lang ma-realize po natin to. Part ito ng completion natin. Colossians 3 verse 3. Look at. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Ano tayo? Where is your life? Where is your life? Is hid with Christ in God. Now, the question is, where is Christ? Because your life is hid with Christ in God. Where is Christ? Verse 1, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of the Father. 
Set your affection on things above, not on things on earth. Your life, verse 3, is hid with Christ in God. Where is Christ? At the right hand of the Father. And you are hid with Him. And what was the, what was the output, supposedly? I am already there. I am hid with Christ. I am raised with Christ. I am seated with Christ to a, an exalted position, to a lofty place, to a place of authority, to a place of supremacy, to a place of, of preeminence over all principalities and power. And you and me, a sinner, a vile sinner, a dogs of the Gentiles, are now saved by grace through faith and now quickened and raised without any merit of our own. And we are now made complete in Christ and including that he made us to sit together in heavenly places. And rightfully so, my heart should go with it. Amen. My affection should go with it. My mindset, my pursuit. Amen. My seeking and searching should go with it. And guess what? God gave you a position which is higher than any angels. Because you are seated with Christ. Ang hirap naman isipin yun. That's why meron na tayong capacity na makipag-war. With not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in heavenly places. Bakit? Because you are called to subdue them. And that's why sa mystery, ang atin pong pag, 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 ano po, pag, pag minister sa mystery and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hidden God. So not only all men, but Ephesians 3.10, but now unto the principalities and power in the heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdoms of God. That's why isa po sa mga audience natin, hindi lang tao. You have that spiritual side. You have now... You are now part of that heavenly places. You are now have now that blessed position and inheritance with Christ in the heavenly places. Kaya isa po sa ating mga minister, mga audience, including principalities and power in heavenly places. Kaya po pagdating sa judgment day, sinasabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 6, Know ye not? that ye shall judge angels because God in Christ, that part of completion made us also so much better than the angels. In my flesh, we are made little lower than the angels, but in our soul, in our spirit, our position is we are higher than the angels. And be careful po mga kapatid because you are not ministering only to the visible things to men but also you are demonstrating the mystery to the invisible. You have now become part of the spiritual world the moment you've got saved. The things in the heavenly places and our message is the mystery. And every time we talk about the mystery, Pinapangaralan po natin ang taga heavenly places reminding them that Christ is now the head of all principality and power and it's no longer that devil it's no longer the devil that they they follow but it's Christ by virtue of what he has done kaya tinago ng Panginoon tong mystery po na ito dahil ayaw niyang malaman din kasama ang jablo kasama ang anghel pero ngayon pinakita na ng Panginoon. Pero not before Christ died, pinakita ng Panginoon after na ma-accomplish ang kailangang dapat gawin. At yun po yung death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Which includes the plan of God for the angels, the principalities, and power. At yun ka, yun ako, 
Huwag pa lumpo-lumpo. Huwag pa ano po mga kapatid. Because in Christ, we are complete. In Christ po mga kapatid. I, as God you does in Christ, yan po tayo po mga kapatid. Now, my point of telling you this is when we understand our position before God in Christ, when you understand that, it would give you a different view mga kapatid, or a better perspective of what a Christian life should be. We are now free to glorify, amen, the Lord. And security, that security, that assurance, allow us the freedom to relate ourselves to God po mga kapatid. And we are not free to glorify the Lord as long as we are under the yoke of this of these mga lower base ideology, theologies, philosophy, legalism, traditions, and rudiments of the world. We are not free to glorify the Lord as long as we are under their yoke, as long as we are under ignorance. Our capacity to love, our capacity to honor the Lord does not depend on our effort and morality. It depends on our recognition amen, of what He has done and what He made us in Christ. It depends on our recognition to who Christ is and to who we are in Christ. This positional truth that I'm talking about give us the freedom toward God. It is the basis of our freedom, po mga kapatid. And it is not what we do, but it is what Christ did for you and me. What He has given for you and me. We need to be free, amen, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do not have that freedom to love and honor Jesus Christ if we do not understand, if we do not understand what He has done for us what he has made us in Christ. But when you come to the full assurance of the understanding that Paul was praying to, by the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, whoo, we will have a different outlook to who Christ is and we will have a different outlook to how we should live in this life as a Christian. And that's who you are. That's who I am. Not because of what I have done. It is all of his done. All of his power and might and sacrifice and merits and all of that. And I, I, should, I should view that as God viewed me. Amen. And mga kapatid, please, I don't know. I, I don't know if this truth can still excite us. I don't know if this truth can still steer your heart, move your heart. It may not be something, a motivational thoughts or words, but that's a powerful truth from the word of God. I don't know if these things are still an impact to you. I don't know if it could still raise your gratitude. I don't know if it can still find a place or, or can, how can I be familiar with this so deep a truth? I cannot. And I hope, mga kapatid, the message would impress in our heart and would add joy and would add, mga kapatid, glory. Amen. And longing to glorify Him and serve Him and a proper walk as we live in this Christian life. And I thank God for, for the completion that we have in Christ. And, and um, give, I'll give back now to, to our Pastor Ben this morning and thank you very much praise the lord amen amen okay.